How you doing everybody? It's uh, w Thursday the 4th of February 2010 and it's just after lunchtime. And I did a little potion yesterday about uh, the pigs in Europe and uh, I just want to sort of follow that up because uh, it is something we're going to have to concentrate on an awful lot because uh, I didn't realise but yesterday morning there was a, a fallout as a result of Portugal's involvement with the pigs and uh, as I say the pigs are Portu Portugal, Ireland, uh, you can also throw in Italy I believe and uh, Greece and Spain okay and then following not so far behind is the UK I'm told alright now uh, the first article I want to put up is from a lefty newspaper alright and because uh, sometimes you don't get a very good coverage of this stuff and certainly you, you you don't get it in a, a, a lot of the sort of, I would be reading a lot of uh, economics type newspapers and they tend to be quite right wing so you wouldn't get, you wouldn't get uh, certainly from an editorial point of view and a lot of a lot of them would only cover this sort of thing as a last resort but what's happening is in Greece, let's deal with Greece first and then we're going to deal with Portugal and then we're going to deal with Ireland uh, what's happening with Greece is uh, they're going to have major strikes on their hands and they've actually put the, the trade unions in Greece have put the the, uh, the whole process together I say I've put the links up there you can have a wee read of it okay uh, it basically tells you that which is extraordinary gives you a great insight as it tells you one of the most militant trade unions would you believe in Greece so the Greek government have got a real headache I tell you man they've got a major problem are the tax officials the union representing the tax officials I believe they're the most left-wing and the most militant of all the trade unions in Greece so they're out at the moment and uh, I don't think they'll take too much bullshit from the Greek government even though the Greek government's supposed to be a socialist government and all the rest of it okay uh, this is a serious austerity program they're introducing in Greece they're going to sack a lot of people they're automatically going to reduce the the uh, but they're going to put a constraint on wages and they're going to cut back on a lot of the, the, the wages in, this, in the full state and semi-state bodies and they're also going to levy a, immediately put a, put a what do you call it a, a surcharge on fuel so all in all it's it's going to create quite a response I just want to tell you one thing in history when the Roman Caesars ruled Rome a lot of them were very unpopular and they had a river up in the middle of Italy called the Rubicon <clears throat> and it was part of Roman law legions could not cross it do you understand the legions all had to stay outside and the only legion that was allowed inside Rome it was a partial legion it wasn't a full legion was the Praetorian Guard all right how it was chosen it's another day's work but it doesn't matter but they were there to guard the Caesar of the day all right and also the Senate House and a few other places they were to guard about 10 places in Rome and when the tax collections took place a couple of times every year throughout the Roman Empire and the money was brought back to Rome to be disseminated the people who were paid first number one were the Praetorian Guard All right. so I think the Greeks have got it all arse about face I don't know how they're going to handle that one but you've got major problems if the tax collectors aren't on, aren't on team aren't on side anyway the next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about Portugal. All right, and Portugal had a major problem yesterday, and the major problem when something like this happens, it has a, a, a ripple effect right across the economic sea, as it were. And what happened was they had a bond auction yesterday morning. The Portuguese did, and they had to call it short. In other words, it failed. The auction failed. There wasn't enough buyers there to buy their bonds well let's put it this way there probably was enough buyers there to buy their bonds but not at the interest that the, that the Portuguese were offering okay so the Portuguese are going to have to go back to the planning board and up their interest rates if they want to sell any more bonds but the impact that it had was it had a bad impact across the equities market not that I give a monkeys about the equities market that's totally gambling all right that's number one uh, but it did have an effect on the foreign exchange markets and the euro took a tumble against various sets of currencies including the dollar the US dollar all right so it just tells you what goes on so 
I'll find out more about it. I might have to do a bit of work to find out how much wasn't sold or whatever. You may not be able to find out about it. They might, they might want to cover it. But uh, it, it, it was a failed auction anyway. Okay, so doesn't look doesn't all go well for Ireland or for anybody else going to the market at the moment. And these uh, <coughs> these Greeks are at the moment trying to raise 53 billion in the next six months on the open market, on the bond market. So we see how that works out. The next two articles relate to Ireland. <coughs> One relates to this fellow who's the richest, they say he's the richest man in the, in the country, a fellow called Sean Quinn. And he's a man took a big hit, they say, <coughs> oh, excuse me, over this uh, Anglo-Irish debacle where he bought uh, shares and shares in Anglo-Irish to bolster the price of them. And, uh, the, the intimate details are, are, I think, are a mystery to everybody. But the bottom line of it is he took a hit what size of a hit nobody seems to know but it seemingly has affected some of his companies see it would never affect any of his companies in Ireland because the state probably wouldn't let it he employs a huge number of people here in Ireland and I'd say the state would do something or get it get it sorted some way but uh, in the rest of Europe it made, me, it made me all that easy to do so in the rest of Europe his several of his investment companies involved in property etc have taken a hit and it's impinged on a lot of a lot of the goings on of the he has a Holton company obviously and he's these are all various satellite companies within the Holton company and one of them in Sweden it looks to be in diffs so have a read of that article the final thing I want to say about it is I don't know anything but he, he runs an organization called Quinn Healthcare and uh, the article raises certain issues within it so if you're <coughs> or if you know anybody that's involved with Quinn Health Healthcare, they may like to read that article. Okay, and the final thing is just a little insight into what made our society tick for 11 years and got it the way that it is. And it's about a man called Antonio Carluccio. I think I don't think that's right. I thought his name was Antonio Carlucci. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He's a famous chef of the t of the TV. And uh, if you ever watch any of his cookery programs, my wife watches them, so it's one of those things. <coughs> so another time I'd see him, if I'd be down eating something, I'd see him in the background. He seemed a nice, affable sort of fella. Uh, big, big guy, uh, say he's in his 60s, and uh, very robust and bon vivant, all that sort of, you know, and very nice man. Anyway, he has franchises all throughout the world, and one of them is down in Dawson Street. In a, in a restaurant in Dawson Street and it's called uh, Carlucci's or Carluccio's right anyway looks like they're in trouble uh, they're paying a rent down Dawson Street in Dublin it's on a corner of Dawson Street and Duke Street and I know it well because I used to work there for many years just around the corner but uh, they're paying a rent it's hard to get it's hard to get your head around this the rent they pay is 680,000 euros a year okay colossal rent but anyway the building that they're in was bought in 2006 2007 by a group of investors headed up by a fellow called Jonathan Fitzpatrick and he's Sean Fitzpatrick's son so he must be in his 30s and they borrowed 17 million to buy this building okay now I don't know whether or not all of it came out of Anglo-Irish but obviously some of it came out of Anglo-Irish if your daddy's a CEO an Anglo-Irish bank he's going to give you some of it isn't he so but I just think it's a sad reflection of what went on in this country that here you have a restaurant that's employing 60 people and I wish the restaurant had a very success I don't want it to close I want the people to still be in work and be productive and all the rest of it I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coming at it from that angle I'm just saying imagine if you'd have taken that 17 million that those banks give out for speculation purposes just pure gambling purposes that's all it was the gamble that the property went up they were hoping that it would go up three or four million or whatever and they'd be able to sell it off and cop, cop a serious amount of money Do you know what I mean for a short term investment that's probably what they were thinking but imagine instead of doing that if you had to put it into say 15 factories that's all just there, that's the difference greed against foresight you know just that's it, but sure, that's Ireland, that's Ireland in 2010 to the beginning of the 21st century.